Okay, we're going to do relax on the mat, or we're going to start mat work, where you can teach a dog to go lay on the mat. The best thing to do if, you, if you're doing this in the beginning is to get the mat, put your dog away in another room, sprinkle some treats on the mat. Okay? The dog's going to, I'm going to let the dog out of the room. As soon as the dog comes in, they'll probably go to the mat because they smell the treats. As soon as they step on the mat, you're going to click and treat if you're using a clicker or mark it with a yes or whatever your marker word is. I'm going to let my dog out now. Now he's, um, this is Noah. He's my Aussie. He's a little familiar with this, but really I have not done extensive mat work with him. He actually does go straight back to it. There we go. And then I'm going to toss a treat away. That's not far enough away, sorry. See, he's actually go to your mat. He's actually not wanting to release when I throw the food, so he's waiting for my me to say okay. Okay, and then he'll get up. Which yours probably your dog probably won't do that unless he knows that. Get on your mat. Because he would go back, he would go to get the treat and immediately go back to the mat. As soon as your dog is doing that repetitive behavior, get the treat, go back to the mat. Get the treat, go back to the mat. Your dog's ready for it to be on cue. So, okay. Then you can start to move around the room and give the cue from anywhere, which is called spatial recognition. Okay. Get on your mat. the time that he's on the mat. Now that I've got him on the mat. Good boy. Now also my dog does know a stay so that helps. Um, good boy. But what you can do for dogs that don't know stay that would pop up right away. Good boy. I'll give a high rate of reinforcement. Good boy. While they're down and on the mat. Good boy. Okay. For short periods at first. And then get on your mat. spacing the food out. Good boy. The good boy is going to always be a bridge that tells him you're doing well, keep it up. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Now, sometimes I don't use the clicker at this point anymore. Some people will. A lot of times I don't. I use my verbal. And then just use a good boy, good boy, for the continued duration of the staying on the mat. Um, if you want to use the clicker, there's also different ways people do it depending on who you talk to. Some people end it, okay, end the behavior with the clicker. He's done a duration, I click it, and then I release him. Um, 
you know, it's kind of really whatever you want to do. <coughs> See how he went straight back to the mat? I didn't even ask him to. On your mat. Good boy. Good boy. Now, see how he's real tense and he's ready to get up? That's not relax on a mat. That's go to your mat and lay down. So if you're doing the relaxation exercises, I really would wait for, and it depends on the dog, you could be waiting for a long time. I would wait for a relaxed state where he'd be laying over on a hip, leaned over. We'll see if we can get it out of him. Um, if the dog is real, uh, really, really needs a lot of relaxation work where they're either really active or they can't relax well at all on their own, I would wait for the dog to even lay on a hip and also put their head down. Anything that's relaxing. And not because it's on cue. Not because I told them to do that. But because they choose to do it on their own and they're choosing how to relax. So, see, he's not relaxed at all. Uh, now he's just going through his tricks. Uh, so now you can see where he knows how to go on the mat and lay there for a bit, but he doesn't really know how to relax on a mat, and he doesn't know, um, well, see, now that's relaxed. See how he's over on his hip? He's over more on that hip. It was kind of rolled over instead of him being in the sphinx down. Um, so that's a beginning of a relaxed. And if I had a real anxious dog, I would take that as a first step, any sort of relaxation. Um, if I had a real, you know, really, really want to work on that. So it just depends on the dog. Get on your mat. Good boy. So, um, and when you're really doing the relaxation, you don't usually cue them to get on the mat. After a while, you want them to get on there and just learn to go get on there and relax on their own. So there can be a big difference. And you don't click when they relax. You just reward kind of really silently. So I'm going to, now he's in training mode. i got my clicker in my hand. He, you know, so he's not in relaxed mode. Um, but I'm going to see if I can't get him to relax a little more. Good boy. Good boy. Now some dogs, here's a little side note. See how hard he takes the food? Now that's easier than it was. A lot of times he'll get real grabby with the food. And that, you know, a dog that gets real grabby and greedy, a lot of times that's stress. Some dogs are just grabby. But um, overly grabby can be stress or anxiety, if, especially if you have multiple dogs around and you're feeding treats. One of them gets real greedy, grabs it, nips fingers. It's usually competition, so that's stress because the other dogs are around. See, now he's a lot calmer when my other dog is not around with that. Now, if I take him out and go to a class or do something, he grabs food a lot harder. He gets a lot more stressed out in those situations. So... So, that's kind of just a few steps. Those are very rushed through, okay? I completely rushed through those steps. Those were not baby steps. And again, he's not an excellent demo dog for a beginner because he knows a lot of these steps. He knows stay already, which makes his duration a lot easier. He knows to go on the mat. Um, so, um, so, he's not going to be as... Your dog, if it's a new dog and you've never done this, is probably going to present a few more issues. But I just wanted to show really some of these behaviors so you could understand how you could get them. Okay. Get on your mat. Yes. Boy. That's a good boy. So, um, that's how you can start it. Again, to build duration. So see, I'm right here and I'm not moving. Good boy. But I'm still telling him now I'm moving around. I'm walking around behind the camera. And he can see me, as you can tell, he's watching me. That's a good boy. And I'm still telling him he's good for not getting up and for staying there. Good boy. I would go back to the dog. Good boy. For dogs that you're just starting duration on, don't stay as long away from the dog yet. Again, he knows duration, so he's good at this because he has been taught duration for other things. So <clears throat> he's well versed in it. Good boy. But you see how I'm not giving one treat after the other, where in the beginning I'll give. In the beginning, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I'll give a lot. Okay. And then I release. Get on your head. Good boy. Good boy. 
okay? <laughs> then I'll release. Um, and then the next time, good boy. Then I'll slowly start to space the treats out. But I verbally give the treats, if you will. Good boy. <laughs> There was a little bit harder grab there. You can see he's getting a little nervous. Good boy. And he's a little, he's worked up. See how he's tense, he's barking, he's hitting. Yeah. So he needs to learn more relaxation. If your dog is doing this, then you're doing, you may be doing mat work, but you need to do more, do more relaxation on the mat. Where you're really, he's relaxed, he's over on a hip, so he's a step over now. He's probably on a hip because he's been doing his little tricks. Oh, I'm just gonna straighten this up. Young man. Good boy. So, dogs, some dogs do better the less you talk to them. You give them real, real low end rewards verbally. Good boy. Where I still verbally tell him. But I don't get to. Good boy. And it doesn't help that I'm talking to the camera. He's probably getting a little confused with me just talking. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. There you go. So there's a few you can go home with.